Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the final in the Transforming Assessment series for at eAssessment Scotland 2013. Um, today's session is on learning analytics, one of the really hot topics. Um, so hopefully we'll get quite a crowd come today. Um, Sue Whale from University of New England is going to be our lead speaker today and we're also joined fortunately by Josie Fisher who will provide um, interaction and will be able to answer your questions in the text chat box down the bottom. So I'd like to now hand over to Sue who will get us underway. Thank you Matthew. Um, welcome everybody and thank you for attending this session. Um, I'm Sue Weil and Josie Fisher as Matthew um, indicated is also present in this webinar. Um, we'd just like to put apologies in for Freddie Roberto who was uh, um, at the last minute unable to join us today. Um, so our, our project, our OLT funded project is called Learning Analytics, a bottom-up approach to enhancing and evaluating students' online learning. So just remembering how to use the controls. <laughs> um, so the presentation will go through, um, you know, we'll cover the sections you can see on your screen now. Um, beginning with a bit of a look at the li literature and a brief overview of the project. Uh, we initially started with a case study which um, I'll explain in a minute as I go through the presentation and then we developed that into what is our OLT funded seed grant. Um, obviously at the end of the presentation happy to have some discussion and further questions uh, but as Matthew mentioned, you're welcome to post questions um, in the in the chat room as we go. So the term analytics has been around for a while now, um, and most of us working in universities are probably familiar with you know what we mean when we're talking about analytics. Um, the distinction between academic and learning analytics is important in terms of our project because we see our project as focusing on the learner at the unit or subject um, level rather than rather than the early alert type of um, systems that academic analytics tend to use. So in looking at some of the literature, I mean, there's no surprises in this kind of, um, you know, these kinds of things. We know that there's an increasingly diverse student population. Um, there's new pathways uh, and accessibility of education programs. So um, we know that because of these um, diverse groups, we need to work on increasing chances of success for students. Um, and, and that's particularly the case in uh, online learning. Uh, research by Shin and Morrison Zuluaga uh, indicates that the perception of distance students and um, you know, uh, uh, how they perceive that interaction in their online learning is really important. So development of social presence, um, teacher presence, there's a lot of different terms related to that. Um, but you know, um, online students can have that feeling of disconnection and we believe that increasing social presence and interaction in online learning can be facilitated uh, and lead to positive experiences for students. Um, and, and reaching out to students has we believe a significant impact on improving their success. Um, there's a, quite a few studies around, you know, talking about coaching and contacting students to to touch base with them, which um, does appear to reduce attrition and um, increase the effectiveness of learning programs. So as I mentioned before, our project started with a case study. Um, we looked at one subject in our postgrad program 
um, and we we um, you know did a bit of, of work on that, and I'll explain that in a moment. Um, and then we developed an OLT grant proposal, um, which expanded that and looked at um, developing interventions and implementing these uh, in real time in in units as we taught them, subjects as we taught them. So um, this was basically our case, and so our case study. Um, it was a subject level focus and we wanted to look at one subject and test whether we thought that that could be expanded across uh, a number of different units or at an institutional level. Um, and so really just working from the ground up, testing and, and trying to determine whether such a sort of a project would be worthwhile across a suite of units. And the subject that we chose initially is a compulsory postgrad subject. Um, it's a fully online subject, so there's no blended component. Um, they're not on campus at all. It's offered online through our um, web-based LMS, which is Moodle. Um, there's a typically a high enrollment, um, and the students that come in into this program with often no previous university studies. Um, so you can see that the demographics, they're older students, um, they're generally working full time, studying part time, uh, and there were in this particular subject there was a, a high percentage of um, in international students and that of course uh, has impact in in their success as well. Um, so you know we knew that those characteristics could lead to increased attrition. And we believe that an intervention program at the unit level might assist in increasing the likelihood of success for some of those students. So we asked two research questions. Um, I'll just give you a moment to read those. So what we actually wanted to know was if we could use student outcomes from early assessment tasks as a predictor of overall success. And we also wanted to look at how, uh, how important participation in the LMS or you know, being online was to overall achievement in an online unit. So we looked at the outcomes from early assessment tasks and compared these to final results achieved, uh, including non-completion. We identified the top five and the lowest five achievers in the unit, and we anal in the unit, sorry, and we analysed their participation in the LMS. So we looked at, um, you know, how when they accessed, how they accessed the materials, what kind of order they were accessing materials in their activity in um, the discussion forums online, those kinds of things. So, you know, content access and usage patterns for each of those groups of students. We looked at two assessment activities. Um, the first was an online activity um, worth only 5% and non-compulsory in the unit. And when we looked at, you know, who at the results of that activity compared to the results of the unit overall, we found that students who completed the activity were far more likely to successfully complete the unit and they do have marginally better grades 
than the students who did not complete that activity. That was the first assessment point. The second one was the online test. Um, and you can see here that um, of the nine students who failed the test, only three ended up successfully completing the unit. So um, that indicates that, that, that students who perform poorly in the test are obviously at risk of non-completion, even though the test, again, was not worth uh, a significant amount of marks and um, failing or non-completion of those two early assignments. Um, or assessment tasks were didn't mean that the student had no chance to to complete the unit. So um, we we didn't look at later assessment tasks, which obviously were were more important and um, had a bigger impact on uh, whether a student would complete or not. So the inferences from these from looking at these two assessment tasks, where that students who completed the optional activity were more likely to complete the unit. Um, students who completed the activity did better in the test than those who didn't. And that the test results were a good indicator of future success in the, the subject. So we came up as as we went through this unit, we came up with some interventions that we thought might help students if they, um, you know, well in this case, if they did not complete the online activity. Um, so we thought, you know, a private discussion space, so it was less threatening, less open to everybody and could focus really on, on the, the aspects um, that the activity covered. And also personal contact, so um, we, we thought that was important right through to to be reaching out to students. Uh, and similarly with the um, the students who did poorly in the test, that you know there were a few things we identified we thought could help and and help enough to get them through the unit. I know I'm missing some of the chat, but I I can come back to your questions um, later. I think I'll be able to expand the chat room, so I'm sorry about that. Um, Actually, uh, Susan, so there's just one question that um, yep. that would be helpful if you could respond to. It's sure. about downloading the logs and into an Excel document. It's um, Avon's most recent yep. question. Um, it's very much for me. Any tricks to do? It's yeah. I I did find that with Moodle that um, it it can get to a point where there's too much data there to pull out. Um, it's one of the shortfalls of analytics with Moodle. Um, it I. As we went through, we were sort of pulling data as we went out and um, obviously because um, I was looking at particular activities and in in the later part we talk about you know, particular students and pulling out their logs, that meant that I wasn't pulling the whole lot so into an Excel, but I agree it was, um, Moodle was a little bit clunky to, to pull the, uh, you know, full data set out unfortunately. I hope that answers the question. I know it doesn't, doesn't provide us, um, an answer to the problem, but it, yeah, yeah, no, you haven't missed anything. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, as I was saying that you know one thing that we thought was really important with reaching out to these students is to you know a, a personal contact because that then increased social presence, which then increases engagement in the unit. So um, we sort of get to, that's why we came up with some of the um, interventions that we came up with later. Uh, and yes, we talk about workload a bit later too, Mary. Um, so the next thing we looked at was the participation in the LMS. And 
wanting to really get a sense of whether um, you know whether students um, activity in that space did impact their success in the, the unit overall. So we looked at the our best five students and the, the lowest performing students um, and these ones we found that they were regularly accessing the material, they were sort of weekly in there, um, you know, reading the things that we that had been put there for them to read, listening to podcasts, they all completed the optional activity and they were also um, in the forums regularly, so not always commenting themselves, but you could see that they were in reading what, what people were doing and talking about in those spaces. Compared to the students whose, whose grades were between 40 and 49 percent in this case, very random access, some listen to the podcast, but not all of them, others you know, didn't look up them at all. The most significant thing though we felt was that they didn't access the LMS at all until we were in week three, um, which is three weeks into a, a you know, 12 week um, teaching period is a, a significant amount of time to lose. So that was one trigger that we thought was um, pretty important. And so these are the inferences that we came up with from those that, that it was important to access materials in sequence regularly, be in the forums um, and, and if possible to look at additional resources. So the interventions for those students who were, um, you know, uh, demonstrating a poor study pattern or poor access to the LMS, we thought that contacting them by the end of week two would at least um, ensure that they that, you know, that they were able to access, they were getting into the materials and, and not leaving it too late, that the chance of catching up was, um, was um, highly unlikely. So this moved us into our into our OLT project. Now the project itself, we um, looked at a number of subjects across the business school. Um, we chose undergraduate and postgraduate subjects, so we had a difference there. Um, and we chose compulsory and non-compulsory units as well. So. Um, just to give that little bit of variation so we weren't totally focused on the postgrad as we were in the case study. So our aim, our aim of the um, project overall was a critical evaluation of the use of learning analytics and interventions to increase student engagement satisfaction across subjects offered entirely by distance mode. Um, so I'll just clarify, both our postgraduate courses are only offered by distance mode, um, only online. Our undergraduate course courses um, and, and the unit we chose to look at in this project is offered both uh, in on and off mode, uh, but we only evaluated um, off-campus students. Okay, so we wanted to use a design that individual coordinators, educators could use on an ongoing basis. So we didn't want to, um, we don't have an overall dashboard system or anything um, that that's um, simple to use. We had to use what was available in the LMS um, and as has been noted in the um, in the chat room, it's, it wasn't perfect. It was a little bit time consuming um, to pull the information out, um, but a good exercise. And, and um, yeah, and so we'll get to, to that further in. So 
So our approach was much the same as in the um, in the case study. We tracked activities. Uh, looked at different access points and different assessment results for students in the early parts of the unit and we implemented interventions based on those um, identified behaviours of students and then we've done some evaluation which we'll talk about shortly. So we use the results of the case study to um, inform the establishment of patterns of behaviour um, and, and where we thought the key points were. Um, we came up with behaviours that we thought we'd, we would target in this um, seed grant. So um, it was the, the limited access to the LMS, poor results in earlier to assessment tasks. We also looked this time at um, access to materials just prior to major assessment tasks. We figure it's it was if if we left it to um, after the assessment task that was too late to be of any benefit to students for, for any kind of intervention. What we wanted to make sure is that we could um, you know push them along to get moving with their developing their major assessment tasks um, and access across the teaching period as well is another thing. So these triggers we used to, form, to inform the interventions that we uh, eventually develop, developed and implemented. And the timing of course was, was um, dependent on what the behaviour was, so um, access to the unit was you know, timed at a certain point early in the unit, but obviously the, the interventions relating to assessment tasks were were timed to um, fit in with those particular activities in and, and that there was a range across the three units, obviously because of different due dates and so on. Um, and we we wanted to make it as personalised as we could so that um, it wasn't just a, an automatic email. So intervention one, um, the first thing we did was look at you know that, that access to the, the LMS in the first few weeks. Um, there were 43 students across all units that had no access or, or had been only fleetingly in the LMS uh, and they were contacted through phone calls. So that was our first point. Um, you can see that the sorts of questions we asked, we didn't um, we didn't make it obvious that we were targeting those students because they hadn't been in the LMS. We were we were just made it quite casual and um, you know just checking up, seeing if you're going okay. Um, so that was the where we started. If we were unable to contact them by phone, there were a few of those. We followed up with um, emails and then they were personal emails from the unit coordinators uh, and the unit coordinators responded to those emails mostly within 24 hours. Um, so students seemed to appreciate that. Um, the initial response was, oh thanks, you know, uh, thanks for getting me back on track and, um, and an appreciation of um, the interest, I guess, that um, the, that the coordinators were actually taking. So the second intervention was for um, students who demonstrated poor results or non-participation in early assessment items. So um, some of the assessment tasks in the unit were um, again lowly weighted, um, not compulsory, so uh, Non-participation did not mean that um, they couldn't successfully go on to complete the unit. Um, but in this case, we um, contacted them via email, and you can see that's one of the uh, you know sample email that we sent for for one assessment task. Um, it was just to try and get them to um, well to 
reach out if they needed help, I guess was the, the plan behind that one. And uh, as I said, don't, they're not, not heavily weighted tasks, um, but we felt that they were a strong indicator for success in the remainder of the unit. So getting students engaged in the materials was, was important at that point. Then the third intervention was the students who were not accessing the LMS more than seven days prior to the due date of a, of a major assessment task. So um, we contacted, as it says, 36 of these. Uh, no, sorry, we contacted probably in the 40s, I think it was, um, students who hadn't been in the LMS at that point. Um, and of these, 36 ended up submitting their assignment. So, um, you know, it, it's really hard to tell. They could have anyway, um, but it was a way to reach out. And as part of the evaluation for um, this project, we've uh, conducted an online survey with students in each of the units. Um, you can see that the, the results, you know, students believe that they've, that they've been encouraged to engage with material, the, the prompts were seen as positive and, and that they feel they've increased satisfaction with the unit, um, which is great. I'll, I'll just clarify this MM110. That's our undergrad unit. So this was one. This is the results for one undergrad unit, and then two postgraduate units. Um, and and the difference between the two postgraduate units, we we need to do some analysis, some further analysis on it. But we believe that the GSB 751 is typically one of the last units students do in the program. And so we wondered if that was, um, you know, if they, because they were so familiar with the online learning environment that they were sort of less impressed um, with being contacted. Right, but that's something that we have to still look at. And these were some of the responses um, that students um, put forward in the in the online survey um, that you know it helped them with exam prepara assignment preparation that, and that they did have an enhanced learning experience. In the online survey, we also um, uh, surveyed students who did not receive any of the interventions that we're talking about. Um, so the students that didn't actually hit any of those um, key points that we targeted. Um, and you can see that it's marginal, but there, there is slight, um, you know, slightly higher results for the students who were targeted by the interventions. So they, they obviously felt their learning experience was better than those that did not have that sort of personal contact. Um, so the conclusions with, um, and final remarks, we, we believe that tracking student activity and, and using that information to intervene has the potential to influence students' behaviour. Um, so we've seen some of that in the results that we've got. And we think it, it helps enhance their experience in, in being online. Um, it was a useful process to identify the behaviours that might impact students' results. And so to think about how you might um, you know, include certain activities or or assessment tasks that would 
would put that flag up for you in your teaching. Um, and so as um, I, I noticed in the chat room there was a comment on workload. We did think that it was very time consuming. We think that um, certainly the way we managed it because of um, the systems we're using, it, um, it, it was um, clunky to pull the, the information out of Moodle, obviously, um, you know, a, a tailored system which could collate that information for you would be much more appreciated than, than dealing with spreadsheets and so on in Moodle. Um, and if, you know, there was mention that for the marginal improvement, maybe the extra work isn't worth it. And that's you know, a question that we might have some discussion about um, in a minute. Um, but the next thing we want to do is um, really probe the students and explore, you know, what, what they felt about it. So we've got a series of interviews planned. Um, where we're going to ask them, you know, what their perceptions of this kind of process in their learning is. And then of course there's the, always the question of, you know, the ethical part of um, using analytic data to, to target student groups. So that would be something we'd be very interested in looking at in the future. Thank you. So there's one question that's come up in the chat that um, we haven't covered in, in the slides and the question is how did the targeted students do? Uh, as in their results? Yes. Um, I don't actually, in, in the... no, and I don't think that's something I have in front of me. Oh, yes I do. Um, So the the students who were targeted for um, limited access to the LMS, um, there were 17 contacted by phone and 26 by email. Um, in in the about a, I think it was over a week, I went and then checked the logs to see what kind of access those particular students have. Um, for the undergrad unit, all of those targeted came in and were, were active in the LMS. For one of the postgrad units, um, one student indicated they were going to withdraw, but all the others were, were in and accessing materials. And again, in the second postgrad subject, there were two students who had decided to withdraw from the unit. Uh, but the others were all active. So that intervention actually did change behaviour for those students. Um, the Another intervention targeted students to remind them about an assessment task. Uh, in that one there were 18 students contacted and nine of those subsequently completed the activity. Um, that was a, a non-compulsory task. So um, that while that rate wasn't that good, it was, um, as I mentioned, worth a very low weighting and non-compulsory. Um, for students who did not do so well on early assessment tasks, we had in one unit 17 students contacted and 15 went on to complete the unit successfully. Um, and in the in an intervention where we we um, contacted students who hadn't accessed the LMS prior to the assignment. Um, in one unit we had thirty six students contacted and twenty five subsequently submitted the assessment. So that slide was wrong because it said thirty six subsequently submitted, but it's 
36 were contacted, 25 submitted in the end. So, so uh, um, you know, it's hard to tell whether that, um, whether without that intervention, those figures would have been similar. But it, it does seem that that it has had an impact in that way. Um, and just looking at the questions, we didn't look at gender at all. Uh, Yvonne, I'm just looking at your comment about ethics. It's um, it is interesting, isn't it? The face difference between face to face and um, online. Okay, um, does anybody else have any other questions? Anybody? Okay, folks, um, whilst you're thinking of the last questions, I'm going to stick up the um, feedback survey, so we'll be very grateful if you could fill that in. It does help us improve the processes and um, processes for the presenters also would like to get some feedback on how the session went, so thank you very much.